all kinds of treachery. You've come to the right place because this is Share Shooter, right here on CBC Africa, first in business worldwide. The producers want me to say this show is better than the pink one with Paul Teron. But I'm not going to say that because I'm not mean-spirited. So much so, I'm inviting Paul Teron onto tonight's show because if we've got time for him before the end of the show, I want to know his picks this evening. I'm Bruce Whitfield. This is Share Shootout. Now, is happy hour really over for parliamentarians or will they backtrack? Can you imagine Blade and Zimande in the space green Volkswagen Polo and not something big and posh and gas-guzzling, e-toll-paying, massive but motor vehicle? Now that the public funds cannot buy alcohol for MPs anymore, is SAB Miller still a buy? Now, we don't know the answers to these vexed questions, but what we do know is we've got a wounded stock figure here, only to avenge his loss, and another who is on a hot winning streak. He's got a bottle of whiskey in the car boot, he tells me. Introducing the challenger with one appearance and one loss, Andrew, I'm in a nappy changing crash course short course. Dip burner, and nice to see you as well. Don't look pregnant, but hey, no. he's expecting a daughter, first child. His life is over. Uh, he's up against the uh, reigning champion with eight appearances, five wins, four losses. Chris, I rode the Argus six times. Gilmore from Absa Investments. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. You wouldn't think it, but I did. Did you finish six times? Yes. Fastest time? Three hours, 45. Okay, show sure. off. Well, okay, time for the house rules. Both of our guests have pre-picked three shares. Neither knows what the other holds, but they must accept at least one of their competitors' stocks. Three hours, 45. Gee, that's very good. Um, the longer they leave it, the, the, the more likely they are to have to accept something they really don't like. Each has got 30 seconds to argue their stock pick. And now that we know the rules, do we let the pregnant guy first? No, I, think first. So. I think so. Good Andrew idea. Dickburner from Canon Asset Managers. What a courageous first pick. What a brave man you are. Because he's picking, and this is what Canon does, they pick the shares that nobody else wants and then sit patiently and pray. It's called contrarian. It's good. It's good. Well, it's called value, I think they call yeah. it. Tell me why in 30 seconds anybody in their right mind would go for Anglo-American. Um, I think Anglo-American new management's in place and we're starting to see the results come through now, cost cutting, etc. Mark Purifani is making the right noises. Um, Minas Rio, the monkey on the back, um, for some time now, that's coming online. Uh, towards the end of next year, so that will be fantastic news. The urbanization story in China, I don't believe that's over, it remains intact, so there's still going to be the demand for your base metals. And then if you look from a valuation point of view, they own 65% of Kumba, 80% of Amplats, and Anglo Sur, if you take market values of those three assets, it adds up to the Okay, that's where we have to end it, but neither Kumba Iron Ore nor Anglo-American Platinum have covered themselves in particular glory recently, have they, Chris Gilman? No, you're right. But I, I hear what Andrew says, and I have to confess it's quite a compelling argument. And at this point in time, I think Anglo, you know, it's, 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 it appears to be down and out. There is the new management in place. I've known Mark Kutafani for many, many years, and I think he's going to add a, a lot of new life into this company. So while I think it could take a bit of time, I think there could be a lot of... Um, Noise in the meantime. Yes, a lot of noise in the meantime, but uh, in the longer term, this could actually be quite a good one, I think. Okay, I mean, Mark Kirifani is an energetic guy, ran Anglo Gold Ashanti. The share price of Anglo Gold Ashanti from start to finish was level, which in the gold sector is probably not bad, <laughs> bad going. Results, yeah. um, it's had its own trouble since he left, of course, but nothing to do with management. I don't think more gold price related and industry related. Mm. It's in a mining industry heavily exposed to South Africa. He will openly tell you that his shareholders for a long time have wanted him to exit South Africa, and they probably wanted Cynthia Carroll to do so as well. But he makes a very compelling argument as to why he should stay in the De Beers business in South Africa, in the platinum business in South Africa. And although he's facing lots of noise uh, in the glo around the globe, he stays very committed to this yeah. place. He says um, he's after profitability, and as long as the, the um, assets are profitable, he will hang on to them. They're reviewing all the assets at the moment, and he mentioned De Beers, I think, earlier this week. Um, and I think we wait until November to see uh, exactly what they're going to do with all the assets. I don't see them getting rid of Amplats. Uh, nor De, uh, De Beers at this stage. Kumban all need to come to the party. Um, but I think from a long-term point of view and a deep value contrarian point of view, I think Anglo Platz is, I mean, Anglo-American is definitely a share. Okay, know. now considering, Chris Gilmore, that uh, the other two picks may be deep value contrarian picks as well, do you <laughs> want to risk this particular deep value contrarian pick or do you want to take a chance? It would be disingenuous of me to, to say, no, I don't <coughs> like this one, because I actually do like the one uh, for, for the longer term. So 
I'd actually like to accept this one. You have to accept it. I'd like to accept it. Ooh, you, you may accept it. It's your no, name. No, I would, I would like to accept you it. Are, you are accepting it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. there we go. Well done, Andrew. First, uh, first hit. Uh, I'm interested to see how he's going to turn down the next two, but that's uh, his problem, not yours. Um, he's <laughs> got about to make his problem yours, though, with his first pick this evening, which is, and when one considers the cut in ministerial booze budgets, we've got to assume that ministers don't drink much beer. They drink the posher stuff uh, that you don't touch. So uh, SAB Miller will remain unaffected by Proving Gordon's mini-austerity measures. But in 30 seconds, why SAB Miller? This, I would argue, is the best company that has ever taken, uh, gone offshore and, uh, and has gone for a, 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 a London-listed company. Um, it's got a, the best footprint of any of the global brewers by far, in my opinion. Um, it's mainly emerging market, but we must, mustn't forget that it's also got a big slug in, in the US. And of course, the one thing that we always forget is the great unsung hero here, which is the rest of Africa, which is really motoring very, very nicely indeed. Put it all together, you've got a company that, uh, that I believe is defensive, but it's got great growth prospects as well. And although it's, it's expensive, I think it's deservedly so. Okay, your 30 seconds are up on that particular one. SAB Miller, hard one to shoot down because it is a great business. 850 billion rands worth of brewing around the globe. It is one of the biggest companies listed on the JAC. The bad habit stocks are our biggest. We've got British American Tobacco followed by SAB Miller, uh, together with 2 billion rand on the JAC. SAB Miller, 850 billion rand market cap. Can you accept the pick, considering <laughs> just how frothy it is? Um, I think SAB is a fantastic business. Um, it's exceptionally good quality. Management's done an ex exceptionally good job around the world over the past um, 10 years. The problem is you've got to uh, distinguish a great business and a great investment. Um, SAB Miller, as we know, has uh, this is a rand hedge. This is one. I think one of the three shares that have pushed the All Share app along with Richmond Absolutely. and Naspers, yeah. and that has done exceptionally well. Um, at these levels, I think it's on a PE of about 30 times now. 29, um, yes. Yeah, okay. there or thereabouts. <laughs> Uh, that's exceptionally lofty um, from our point of view. I do buy the argument, a good business, and it probably deserves to trade on a premium. Um, however, a 30 PE, I think that's probably a bit expensive. Explain for why you've got an appetite even with a 30 PE. I think what's driving our market currently is the, the wave of relatively cheap money around the world, and we're no exception. And secondly, the fact that the RAND is exceptionally weak, and in my opinion, it's going to go quite a bit weaker from here on in. Uh, and as a result, I th and, and thirdly, of course, that um, investors and speculators alike are buying quality. And, and to buy quality, to get your hands on it, is becoming increasingly difficult. You've got to pay up to get it. So I, in at least the next six months to a year, I think uh, those conditions will prevail. And as a result, I think companies like SAB Miller, although expensive, will probably go higher. Okay. Take off your long-term deep value hat, if you possibly can. Is there a six to 12-month opportunity in the stock? Um, geez. <laughs> You can't I'll take your head off. It's I wish I, yeah, I, mean, I, I wish I could forecast six months uh, or 12 months into the future. I can't do that. Um, I do think if tapering comes in and we start seeing the liquidity flow out of the system, your companies such as your SABs that are passed on these multiples will but be the hardest what are the, the odds of tapering coming in any time within the next six to 12 months? We was, the, the threats have been made, then the Americans shot mm. themselves in the foot with their petty political <laughs> infighting and tapering yeah. has been delayed once again. And we hit February, it'll be postponed once again because the politicians are idiots and will make Yeah, I don't think anyone themselves. can put their finger on it when exactly <laughs> it's going to happen. I guess you're probably looking a year's time, okay. perhaps. But it's but too rich for your blood. It's far too rich for You're shooting for it us. down. I'm shooting it down. Okay, because the next, okay, you're brave. All right, uh, <laughs> let's move on to the next picks then, because what we've got here is Andrew Dipper in a second pick. He's from Canon Asset Managers. I'm interested in this one because it's always been a little bit like a poor man's Anglo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> less globally diversified, uh, if at all. Um, African Rainbow Minerals in 30 seconds. Tell me why. I think this is a relative story. Um, their main asset is a 50% shareholding of Asmang. The other 50% is owned by Asol. Asol's only um, asset is a 50% of Asmang, and they trade on a market cap of about 60 billion rand. African Rainbow Minerals has a market cap of 42 billion rand. Um, on top of the 50% of Asmang, they've got 15% of Harmony, they've got coal assets, they've got copper assets, platinum assets. Um, so from a valuation point of view, there's a disconnect between those two uh, companies. If you, if you look at the valuations on the PE of 11, this is uh, attractively priced business. Okay, attractively priced. Sufficiently attractive, however, for a guy who's already accepted your first pick of Anglo-American. Do you wish 
you'd binned Anglo-American and held out for African rainbow minerals? No, not at all. I think uh, ARM is, is a great company, um, and I agree with uh, pretty much everything Andrew says. The only point of departure here is I think this is largely traded at a discount to its mm -hmm. NAV for quite some time. And the question I would have to, to put is, what is the catalyst going to be that's going to make that uh, come out of that discount and, and, and realize the value? Because, as I say, great stocks, but I think perhaps too much of a preponderance on, on iron ore, for, for my liking. Okay, too much iron ore. Um, response? Yes and, and no. I mean, ASMAG, the majority of their earnings come from iron ore. Um, as I said earlier, I think the Chinese uh, story remains intact. Uh, Chinese steel production, I think, only has to grow 7% this year in order to take up the uh, supply, f um, the expected supply of iron ore for next year. I think, from a catalyst point of view, I think while it's um, been at a discount to us all for the past year or or two, um, is because of the other assets that it holds that haven't been performing well. And at its year end results, I think in September mm. this year, we actually saw those assets produce a very good set of results. And I think they added 700 million rand to the bottom line. That's, I mean, if you put that on a 10 PE, that's uh, that's a fair chunk um, of of uh, ARR's. It, it's cap. it's hard to argue against, Chris. Mm. You've got to mm. have a negative macro view on this one. Uh, well, I do have a fairly ne negative macro view. You look at uh, the IMF forecast that came out the other day. We're looking at 2.9 percent for global growth this year. Um, I think that gets better as as we go forward. However, having said that, I think the mix. Of, uh, of demand for, for, uh, for metals and minerals is going to change. And it's, in my opinion, it's going to change more towards a developed world type of mix rather than a developing world of mix. Uh, so that's Yet why you're I happy with Anglo-American, but you, on, on the same basis, you're not going to take uh, African rainbow minerals. Yeah, look, I think uh, Anglo also has uh, more of a, a cachet about it. I think uh, it gets the attention of global investors to a far greater extent than ARM does. So you're shooting it down? I'm shooting it down, unfortunately. All right, you were shot down on that particular one. Um, so your, uh, your Anglo-American accepted your African rainbow minerals shot down. Chris Gilmore, you were shot down on SAB Miller, and it becomes quite interesting here, doesn't it? Because your second pick is not a share, but it is a tradable instrument on the JC, which makes it a legal entity on this program. And it is the Platinum Exchange Traded Fund. It's a piece of paper that says you own X number of ounces of yeah. platinum. In 30 seconds, tell me why. Comes back to the comments I made a few moments ago. I think as the world goes into recovery from next year and beyond, I think the demand uh, for platinum is going to pick up, uh, particularly because of uh, the demand for platinum uh, auto catalysts. Um, so I think that what I said earlier, the less demand for the heavy types of things like iron ore uh, and the like, and more towards platinum. If you want to buy, if you want to have an exposure to platinum, I'd far rather be in the platinum ETF. Okay, you don't get a dividend, you don't get the leverage to the, the, the share price, but you also don't get all of the risks associated with buying a miner. Okay, there we go, platinum ETF, Andrew. <laughs> That's a very tricky one. Um, <laughs> That's why he chose it, because <laughs> he's played this game once or seven times before. Yeah. Um, I think we buy the platinum story. Um, as you, t you talk about um, auto <coughs> catalysts, uh, cars manufactured in, in the Far East are growing substantially quickly, and there is going to be that demand. And that's the difference between gold. There's no real use for gold. So when you look at a precious um, metal, do you want gold or platinum? At least there's some sort of demand and a use for platinum as opposed to gold. So I like the platinum story. Um, buying an ETF, uh, um, you're not going to, as you say, you're not going to get the dividends. Um, obviously, we we like a asset that produces something and pays you out. Um, you're not going to get that. Having said that, uh, you also then, you know, don't get all the the labour issues and the mining issues that goes with buying a platinum stock. So it's. It's, it's an interesting one because one, yeah. here you're sitting with uh, Hobson's choice. You don't know what number three is. You don't know whether or not he's setting you with a lemon in uh, spot number three or with the greatest opportunity this <laughs> side <laughs> of Rosebank. So, do you take the platinum ETF or do you shoot it down? At this stage, we don't have any platinum exposure. Um, but you're going back to the office so um, tomorrow morning going, you know what we need to do? We need some platinum exposure because Chris Gilmore's convinced me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure he has. And hence, 
Um, I don't think I can stand here and say, yes, I'm going to accept platinum when we don't hold any platinum, so I'm going to have to that's shoot That's a down. principled and honourable stance, but stupid possibly in the context <laughs> of the game we are playing. Don't go away because gloves are off on the other side of this. Let's just refresh your memories. Chris Gilmore from APSA Investments, uh, SAB Miller and the Platinum ETF. Both have been shot down. Firstly, SAB Miller on the valuation, 30 times earnings, far too rich uh, for the blood of Canon Asset Managers and Andy Ditburner, their representative here this evening, and then the Platinum ETF. They don't own any, he can't in any clear conscience support it. But the game suggests that he's then going to have to find some way to justify the sucker punch <laughs> in third place. And that sucker punch will be revealed in just a moment. Um, and then, Andrew Dippetter, your Anglo-American pick was uh, welcomed and accepted. And Chris Gilmore has got no regrets about that yet because African Rainbow Minerals, he was very comfortable to shoot down in so often on Share Shootout, we've got unbridled hostility. So far tonight, our guests have been horribly genteel and polite. A little, a little bit more personal insight, a little bit more venom, and a little bit more angst, and a little bit more... Because you've got a lot to fight for here, Andrew Dibbene. You're uh, going into the final stretch with nothing to win. Um, and, of course, uh, with an interesting third pick, and Chris Gilmore, your, your third pick. I think he's going to disappoint Mr. Dibberno on a valuation basis in a very significant way. Remember, join the conversation. You can also take cheap shots at hot stocks uh, by using SSO and join uh, Share Shootout. All of that, uh, of course, to have a go at uh, Paul Teron and at Bronwyn Nielsen because uh, they maintain their show is better than ours and we disagree. So before the break, Chris and Andrew gave us uh, each two of their picks. Uh, we've got Chris Gilmore from Apps Investments, SAB Miller and the Platinum ETF. Both of those shot down and Andrew Dippen and Canada Asset Managers, Anglo-American and African Rainbow Minerals. Anglo-American accepted African Rainbow Minerals or not. Okay, Chris Gilmore, should we put Poor Mr. Ditburner out of his misery. I want to see the whites of his eyes. I want to see the tear rolling down his cheek as he goes, I wish I'd accepted the platinum ETF and had taken the flack at the office for that because I'm going to get a lot more flack for accepting, as you will explain over the next 30 seconds, the pick of Times Media Limited. In 30 seconds. This is a fairly radical. Uh, and uh, I see this as having the potential uh, to, be, to be quite a hot stock. Um, I talked to a lot of the journalists uh, in the, 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 the organization, and I can see what's happening. Mr. Andrew Bonnemore, who, uh, from, from uh, Blackstar, who is reorganizing this thing, I think is doing a very good job. I think we're going to reach a very, very uh, small, a bit of a rump of an organization that's going to be easy to sell off uh, uh, because it'll be a lot more efficient, a lot more professional-looking operation that's been in many, many years. So uh, a bit of a punt, but I think okay. worth having a look at. A bit of a punt. Okay, yeah. When, when I said, and I did give a clue at the end of the last part of the program, I said, um, this side of Rosebank. And I, yeah, he could have chosen Standard Bank. They've got a big new corporate head office uh, for the investment banking division in Rosebank. Uh, it could have been Sassel. They've got a big old head office in, 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 in Rosebank, moving towards Santa, and I think uh, early in the new year. It could even have been a high prop, which owns the Rosebank shopping center. And any one of those you probably would have preferred to Times Media Limited, or <laughs> not? If you're looking in the media space, I think it, it could have been worse. He could have picked Naspers. <laughs> 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 so, uh, because I have to accept it, I will accept it. Uh, Times Media is definitely not something that uh, we would be looking at right now. Why not? I think from valuation point of view um, is, is the obvious um, answer. Yeah, it's not a business I'm very familiar with. I don't know it that well. Um, but I do know the valuations within that space are quite pricey. Kakisa Media, on the other hand, which has been taken out at the Being moment, listed, yeah. um, that was one that we liked and we've held for a long time. They've got su superb assets. So, so, do you, so you, Kakisa gets taken out, you get the cash for that. What then do you do with that media money? Because there, there's not many places for you to put it. You could put it I into Caxton, yeah. you could put it into, uh, <laughs> into TML, or you could uh, put it, of course, into... What's the other one I'm thinking of? Nasbash, of course. Uh, I think we'll probably be looking outside of the media space to, to, to put the or to invest mm -hmm. that money. Um, yeah, I think the whole, the whole media um, sector at the moment looks a bit pricey for us. Okay, too pricey, but he's accepting it because he has to. Uh, and th there are some lovely assets within their business, but yes. they've sold off some of the crown jewels. They've sold off um, certainly the visible assets of exclusive books and yes. the, the book companies. They've sold those off looking for a buyer for new metro yes. um, uh, in that space as well. And then yeah, taking out the pot plants and the canteen and uh, all of the soft stuff that keeps, as you would know, being a former 
proper mm. uh, proper jobber in your past as a former journalist, you would know that's the sort of stuff that keeps the wheels of the mind turning. No, you're quite right. But a lot of those things, those disposals you talked about, was, were relatively peripheral. Uh, and what I think uh, Mr. Bonamore is doing is concentrating on the, the real core assets that, that can actually be sold off. I mean, he's with a private equity company. At some point in time, in the not too distant future, he has to make an exit from this thing. And I'm pretty sure it's not going to be at a loss or even close to what they paid for it. So I, I think uh, they're, they're setting this up for a nice profit when they exit. Okay, absolutely. You're accepting it only because you have to and because it's the lesser of several media evils from a valuation mm. perspective. And I think also if they're going to sell off um, assets, I'd much rather see a business doing that as opposed to making acquisitions and overpaying, which they tend to do. Okay. Um, so from that point of view, I think that's a, s a small tick that I can give it as well. So uh, and you're relieved that you waited till, <laughs> till, till, till number three. Okay, <laughs> finally then, let's look at your last pick here, Andrew Dibbett from Canon Asset Managers. Your third one, again, in the resources sector, um, not a p at a particularly high multiple. Um, it's a smaller resources company with only four and a half billion rand on the JSE. Uh, and Chris Gilm was a little bit nervous as to what you're about <laughs> to say. So put him out of his misery on Pan African Resources in 30 seconds. Yeah, Junior gold miner um, I think it's good management um, in the business when you spoke to them they said there's going to be three things the gold price isn't going to work in their favor all the time there's a cost um, coming through and management's going to make mistakes so to mitigate against that they're focused on high quality all bodies and that's what they've got in Barberton um, the cash cost is under $800 an ounce um, and Evander the cash cost is under $900 an ounce those are both high grade um, ores and, um, you know, Pillion Art, you've got that margin of safety with a gold price at about $1,300 a month. So there's, there's a lovely margin of safety. In there. Okay. Margin of safety. Is it enough to excite you, Chris? Not in the slightest. I have, we've never bought a gold miner and we're, we're unlikely to ever do so. Um, I think uh, gold, the gold price is looking very dodgy at, these points in time, at this point in time. Uh, I think the only thing that might save the gold miners, and I take your point, Pan-African is probably one of the better uh, operations out there would be the um, would be a further significant decline in the rand dollar exchange rate, um, which you say is possible. You're which I think is possible. Yes, yes you're, I agree. you're in that space. Yep. No, no, I definitely <coughs> I, I, I agree with that. But having said that, I think there are far too many negatives on the input cost side of all of these things. Um, so I can't get enthusiastic about any gold mine. I know it sounds a little bit of a, a kind of luddite approach, but uh, no, I, I no, I can't do it. Give, you've got 30 seconds to convince him otherwise, but I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, I think it might be a feeble exercise, but um, their, their mines aren't deep. Um, so their um, flagship mine, Barberton, is not a deep mine. Um, when you've got 10... And I cannot believe 150 years later they're still viable yeah. gold in those hills. <laughs> I mean, that's, <laughs> that in itself is a fabulous story, but is it an investment? Yeah, when you look at, at the grade of the ore, there's 10 grams an ounce in there, which is exceptionally good. Evander, which they bought, is uh, widely accepted as a great ore body as well in South Africa. Doesn't have some of the other problems which some of the uh, deeper uh, gold mining companies in South Africa does have. They haven't had the major labor issues that the other um, gold mining and, and platinum mining companies have had. So I think from a management point of view, this is a superbly run business. Um, yes, gold, the gold price could come under more pressure. Um, but uh, I think it's, you know, pulling the, the ore out of the ground that's under $900 an ounce. I think... Uh, There's a margin of safety there, which is... Exactly. I think they're going to be, prof be yeah. profitable going forward, and um, they're turning their profits into cash as well. They've got a dividend yield of 5%. That's okay. exceptionally attractive. Let me put it to you this way, Chris Kimball. If you were being forced at knife point to pick a gold share, which gold share would you choose? If I was being forced at knife point... Yes, against by big as birdies. Against scary my man. better judgment uh, about gold mining generally, yes, I would go for Pan African. Would you like to borrow a knife? Yes. <laughs> no, okay. So, <laughs> Chris Gilmore, you're shooting it down. I'm afraid so. All right, so it brings us to that point in the program where my producers have to tell me who they believe should be the winner. So, producers, uh, put in your thinking caps, don't uh, have a, a nervous breakdown or anything, being asked to think. Let me just run through uh, the stocks this evening. Chris Gilmore from Absa Investments, SAB Miller, the Platinum ETF and Times Media Group. Platinum ETF shot down, SAB Miller shot down, and a reluctant acceptance uh, by Andrew Dittburner from uh, Canon Asset Management of Times Media Group, but he ordinarily wouldn't go anywhere near the sector at the moment with the valuations as high as they are. 
media companies have done very well in a very uh, adventurous advertising cycle where particular financial services companies have been very aggressive advertisers across loads of media. Uh, and then, Andrew, your picks this evening were Anglo-American, African Rainbow Minerals and Pan-African Resources. Anglo-American was the first one because Gilmore accepted that without any qualms more concerned about African rainbow minerals. If he was forced to choose a gold stock, it would be Pan-African resources, but on principle, he should be done. Producers, what is the judgment? <laughs> the baby daddy, the baby daddy, they've named the baby daddy. It's a girl, what are you gonna it's call it? Uh, we've got a few names. We'll wait well, is Bruce see. one of them? Bruce is not one of them, neither is Excellent. Chris. Excellent, nor is Chris, it could be Christine, <laughs> Christella, <Yeah>. Christabel. <laughs> None the producers us. have ordered that I make Baby Daddy the winner of tonight's programme. So, Chris Gilmore, I'm afraid you are history. And everybody seems suddenly so happy to lose. Remember, we'll be hosting another Battle of the Stock Pickers next week, right here on CBC Africa. Do I still get the whiskey? I wonder. Paul Teron, sorry we've run out of time for you again this evening, but do me a favour, come back and look, we'll try and squeeze you in. We're terribly busy here on the fastest moving show on CBC Africa. Please let me know if I made the right decision and my producers, more importantly, made the right decision. If you don't agree, blame the producers. Tweet me your share, shoot our suggestions, and of course, also your thoughts on Stockwatch. Uh, on Stockwatch, on share shootout here on CNBC Africa. At Bruce Business, please don't forget to abuse the Hot Stocks team. That's what they deserve. That's the only thing you can do. Until next time, as we continue to pick out winners and shoot down the rest here on Share Shootout. Good night.